Wielding the might of Stormbreaker, here's a look at the new Diamond Select Avengers Infinity War Thor. Oh, and, and Groot. As the Avengers and their allies have continued to protect the world from threats too large for any one hero to handle, a new danger has emerged from the cosmic shadows. Thanos, a despot of intergalactic infamy. His goal is to collect all six Infinity Stones, artifacts of an unimaginable power, and use them to inflict his twisted will on all of reality. Everything the Avengers have fought for has led up to this moment. The fate of Earth, and the existence itself, has never been more uncertain. These fully articulated 7-inch scale action figures of Thor and Groot are based on their appearance in Avengers Infinity War and feature multiple points of articulation. To get this review underway, the first thing we're going to do, you know the first thing we always do here, we're going to figure out how tall these figures stand, and in order to do that, we're going to have to take the Ultra Measuretron. Now, I'm actually working backwards this time, because I don't feel like there's not nearly enough love for people that support the centimeters, so we're going to start centimeters this time around. Four stands 18.7 centimeters tall which backtracking to what we normally do makes the figure 7.3 inches in height. Uh, we'll do the opposite this time for little teen Groot. He is after all a little bit smaller than Thor. Just how small exactly? Again, more than happy to oblige. The Ultra Measuretron 5000 tells us that the smaller Groot is 6.4 inches in height. And then that works out to be a 16.4 inch, 16, excuse me, 16.4 centimeter tall figure. And seeing as we did this for the Captain America review, let's bring in some of the other figures from Avengers Infinity War. Sadly, Iron Spider really doesn't make the same scenes as the other two characters here, or the other three characters, but you can see how tall they are to one another. Thor is a little bit taller than Captain America. Iron Spider is actually about the same height, just maybe a little bit taller than Groot's. And Thor, of course, seems to be the tallest of the bunch. Let's have a look at the figure's accessories. We'll start with Groot. Groot comes with his little gaming console. It's done here in blue plastic with a little bit of indicators of color in the red buttons and then the black screens in the lower part of the system being also in black. And a little bit of red also featured there on the top and that's what it looks like on the back. Not a whole lot happening on the back. There's the bottom of it as well. You can take it and you can fit it into its hands. You can actually fit it in both of its hands like that. It clamps, sort of clamps everything in place. And then if you want to be able to have him holding it with both hands, it's also something that can be accomplished. Pretty, probably going to be the way I'm going to be displaying it. You can just angle the head down as if he's very thoroughly distracted with the game that he's currently playing on his console. So that's pretty cool. I like that. I like that he's got that little added bonus of something again he was he had in the film um, as for thor's accessories thor of course comes with stormbreaker stormbreaker here is part of groots of course so the handle is more of a wood handle as you can see as it vines its way wraps its way around the head of the hammer sort of an axe hammer if anything the axe does have some really nice paint added to it. Some applications have added some dark, dark grays and some blacks in there as well. The vines are a little bit lighter at the top, I've noticed, versus the rest of the handle, which is a little bit more, like, a little dirtier. They've added a little bit more of a black wash. Just running across that. Filling in all those little terrained areas and bringing out all the little pops of detail like the little knots and the little rooted areas, little grains that you would naturally find in wood are also present here on Stormbreaker. I like that. Thor also comes with a series of interchangeable hands, depending on your preference. Comes with a pair of, well, he comes with a pair of closed fists. Um, one thing I do want to mention with all of these hands, I won't mention it necessarily with this set of hands, but he does also come with a series of grabbing hands. Now, all of them seem to have this sort of additional black wash, something that I favored really so much for Stormbreaker. Almost seems a little bit more excessive when it comes to Thor's hands. All of his hands are like that. 
And again, I know he's just, you know, reawoke a star and forged Stormbreaker, but, uh, you know, his hands are quite considerably dirty. You'll see also a common trend when we start looking at the figures as well. The one other thing I want to mention too is none of the hands, based on the hands that I've tried out, none of them really seem to properly hold Stormbreaker. This is kind of the best of the batch, this one right here. But the further you move up, all the hands have the same problem. There's just not enough of a grip. Uh, personally speaking, I mean, it's nice that you can have him holding Stormbreaker near the bottom of the handle. But personally, I would rather have had him being able to hold it about mid-handle. It's just simply not enough of a grip there. Uh, workaround, obviously, to that is heating the hand, putting it around Stormbreaker, and then just kind of enveloping the handle of Stormbreaker with his fingers and thumb. Let that cool and you'll instantly have a hand that will be able to hold the accessory, a little tip of the trade. Uh, but again, I kind of wish they could have had the hands out of default, just simply getting them out of packaging, which didn't re require any heat manipulation in order to get those hands to pry around uh, the handle of Stormbreaker. Uh, actually, even as you see here, uh, the hand that I've currently got him with right now, it only really has him supporting Stormbreaker, again, when you get to the more bulbous end of the bottom of the handle. It's the only way that he really properly holds it. Again, it sits a little too loose for my liking. So we will, those are your accessories in a nutshell. Let's, I think, work first with Groot. We're gonna take the gaming pad out. I'm sorry, I know you wanted to play your video games. Uh, we're gonna have a look at Groot. Then we're gonna have, we're gonna beeline it over to Thor or T-line it over to Thor. His name is Thor, no, never mind. We're just producers telling me that's not a good one to run with, so we're not gonna run with it. Uh, having a look at Teenage Groot, I really do think that this is a fantastic looking figure. In fact, might be one of the best Groot figures that we have gotten, counting the Marvel Legends, counting the Marvel, eh, those uh, figures that we've got, the basic class figures. This is truly one of the best Groots that we've gotten. I even love the fact that he's got that little tuft of like little sticks and foliage that are peeking their way, kind of giving you a simulated like kind of teenage hairstyle. We all kind of had weird teenage hairstyles growing up. I certainly have had my fair share of horrendous hairstyles. But anyways, there's the interior of his head. You can see loving the grain work there. You can count out the rings, I suppose. Does that still work for Groot? Count out the rings and see how old he is. Really great looking detail and added wash, something of which works well for Groot. May not actually work so much with Thor. Stay tuned. I'm loving the fact that he's got all these little individual panel placements of kind of bark and sides of trunk just kind of comprising out his body. It's a very meticulous looking figure and equally so actually rather impressed that he's got as much posability as he does. As we work our way further down, I did find he his legs were a little bit difficult to get to properly stand. They managed to somehow spoon feed us uh, with a double hinge on the knee. I really wasn't expecting that at all. Thank you very much for, for doing that. Uh, also his feet, there's the undersides of his trunked feet, uh, do have ankle pivots. This can come very much in handy because I find the figure, if not for having that, I find actually that his legs don't sit completely flat. So thank goodness that you can rock the ankles, pivot the ankles, whatever terminology you'd like to use, and you can actually get Groot to properly plant himself. Oh, you see what I did there? On whatever surface that you want to display the figure in. Now for his posability, his head rotates all the way around. His arms hinge outward. Uh, they rotate all the way around, almost as if he's smelling his armpits. Uh, bend at the elbow. Uh, single, by the way, bend at the elbow. A rotation in the hand, which also allows the hands hinge back and forth. No, this guy doesn't have any additional hands. You, nothing to swap out. I mean, I don't, can't think why he would need extra hands anyways. Upper torso ball joint, nothing in the waist. Legs split. Swivel on the top cut of the thigh. Oh, also, also, sorry. Forward and back on the legs. They sort of stop, unfortunately, because he's got these little tree behind plates that sort of stop the legs from going any bit further back from that. Does also have a double hinge on the knee and as we've already discussed, little teenage Groot also has a swivel, an ankle rocker back and forth on his feet. Clearly 
by far one of my favorite Groots that we have ever gotten. If, uh, if only for the fact that getting him stand sometimes can be a little bit more difficult. Luckily, again, he's got the ankle pivot. Doesn't have peggles on the undersides of his feet, but because at least he's got the ankle pivot, uh, you should be able to firmly, okay, we'll say, plant him on whatever surface you want to display him with. Fine work on the Groot. A-OK. -okay. Now we have a look at Thor, which in all honesty is a slightly a little bit more of a disappointing figure. Don't get me wrong, I love the costume that they've given him for Avengers Infinity War. Sort of kind of the more classic for duds, but really more suited and planted. Oh, I'll stop doing that. In a more darker color. You can see primarily all of his costume is a very dark, dark black with these little indicators, just a little bit of wear that they've added to the armor. Each one of the buttons, if you will, have their own little decos added in silver paint. And as we work our way down the legs, while there, again, isn't a whole lot happening in paint, they, at the very least, have given a great sculpt on it. So even like the black areas get afforded a little bit of extra different types of black, just so it's not just the exact same color all the way across. Some silver also does a great job of breaking up the coloring of the boots, even though the silver is very, very small in places. At the very least, he does get a little bit of that happening, so I like that. Dark silver makes up the majority of his arms. Of course, he's got the uh, scaling, like, almost kind of chain-linked chain armor on his arms. And uh, there, then again, he gets his little muddied hands. Now, un unfortunately, this is kind of where this figure stumbles a bit for me, is the head sculpt. Don't get me wrong, I like the head sculpt. In fact, actually, I like it more than I liked Captain America's head sculpt. But unfortunately, I feel like it's a little bit too plagued with additional wash. If the wash had been pulled back just a notch, just a notch, just a notch, that last one doesn't really make much sense, but I probably wouldn't have added as much wash to the face sculpt. The face sculpt is actually really good on this guy. Uh, close up, it looks much better, I think, from afar than from afar. From afar, though, it does look like he's got a little bit of extra kind of mud and dark paint kind of caked all over his face. It's a bit of a detractor because, again, I really do like the figure. I like it's of the three figures that we've looked at, digging the Iron Spider, but I think Thor is probably my favorite of Captain America and uh, Thor. Thor is probably, I would say, my favorite of the of the three. Iron Spider's just kind of in his own category because he's got, you know, he's got great coloring and he's got that metallic coloring that it works really so well. Even like his even though his arms really aren't movie accurate. I don't really want to put him in the same category because he's masked. Of the two figures, though, I think Thor is the better figure of the two between him and Captain America. Still got the little uh, little etchings there on the sides of his hair. Uh, actually, on both sides. Remnants of Ragnarok, although I guess the hair should have really grown in by then, but nonetheless. Beard's done well. Um... He does have some additional brown there. Almost, it seems like he's got a secondary beard growing in. I don't know why that's necessarily a different color than the rest of the beard that's down below. But again, overall, I'm pretty happy with the head sculpt. If not for the fact, again, I feel like whatever sheen of paint that they put as the final finishing coat, I think the, the face could have probably done without it. That's my own personal opinion. I get I get that he's a little bit more dirtied, of course, because he's forged Stormbreaker, but I think his face probably didn't need the necessary, the extra coat of uh, additional paint on it. Just, just my own personal opinion. So let's have a look at this guy's articulation. His head rotates all the way around. It hinges up and down. It rocks back and forth. Uh, his arms also hinge out to about there, to about there. And you can rotate them all the way around. He has a swivel, not so much actually in the bicep, rather instead he's got the swivel in the forearm and that hinges back and forth. The hands also rotate all the way around. Those hinge back and forth. Um, like the Groot, he does also have a torso ball joint. It's a little harder to kind of get in there and move the torso because his cape is, his cape is like rock solid. It's like rock candy. 
Um, it doesn't have very little, it has little to no give whatsoever to it. So it does sort of impede being able to move like his torso back if you want to get a more dynamic pose with Stormbreaker. Um, it does swivel back and forth, but like I said, it can't really hinge back all that much. The legs go forward, the legs abruptly stop to the back of the cape. They swivel at the three quarter, about half cut on the thigh. Double hinge happening on the knee, again a little on the restricted side because of the cape. And uh, the feet very generously, very generously swivel back and forth, ankle rocker till the cows come home. And then you also have the hinge up and down. So there is four. Not bad looking figures. Not, not bad figures at all. The only real stumbling point of the two figures is actually coming from Thor, not so much Groot. Groot's a solid outing. Probably, again, one of the best Groots that we've ever gotten in plastic figure form. Thor is good, but he misses a mark slightly due to, to the, I feel, unnecessary additional wash that they put in his face. If the wash had just been kind of taken off and left without, I think it actually would have been a better head sculpt. Even, even though the head sculpt is good, I think the head would have looked a lot better with the unnecessary paint kind of just taken off of it. You'll also see that neither of these figures come with display stands either. And likely due to the reasoning why is that the plastic was already sort of being occupied and utilized for Teenage Groot. Likely one of the reasonings why we didn't get a display stand for this go around. It's perfectly fine. The trade-off, in all honesty, is better because we get ourselves what I feel is a definitive Groot in plastic form. And that's, again, counting the many different releases of Groot that we've gotten through the Marvel Legends, the basic class of Infinity figures. This really is by far my favorite of the Groots that we've gotten. Plus, as well, he's got his little gaming console. Always like that. Thor is actually not bad. Like I said, he does have good merits to him. Unfortunately, the last kind of takeaway from the figure is paint is unnecessarily added to his face. I'm all about additional washes to the figure, but unfortunately for Thor's face, I feel like he has maybe just a little too much. Only adding then to the fact that he doesn't unfortunately have the means to properly hold Stormbreaker may require when you are picking this figure up for yourself to heat the hand and to sort of mold it around the handle of Stormbreaker. So at the very least, if you want to have him holding it at mid-handle rather than at the very bottom of the handle, you can do that. Unfortunately, the figure just out of packaging just won't do it on its own. Still, a nice release from the folks over at Diamond Select of the two. I still like this one a little bit more than Captain America. Uh, Iron Spider, again, I'm not going to even put in that category because he's a masked character. Likeness level can be a little bit easier to accomplish on a masked figure than one that actually has an actor's portrait. Uh, either way, though, if you guys are interested in picking up the Iron Spider, if you guys are interested in picking up the Captain America, or if you guys are interested in picking up the Thor along with Teenage Groot, all of them are now available at your local retail stores and comic book stores alike. Today we were having a look at the final figure for this three-figure release wave, and this was Thor and Teenage Groot. Now if you want to go back and have a look, don't blame you, you check out some of my other Marvel Select reviews. Also, if you're interested specifically in Avengers Infinity War, want to know, as you're yelling out loudly, does this guy do other stuff, Infinity War? Yeah, I do. I've done. I have. And uh, feel free to check out my Avengers Infinity War playlist, which will contain everything I've done covering the movie from different figures, collectibles, and more. Make sure as well you hit that little subscribe button down below, my friends, colleagues of the interweb, and the mob, because certainly more videos will also be coming soon to this channel. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time.